Chapter 12 Now the boys who landed like a downpour of bright autumn trash were in this order. Tom Skelton, dressed up in his delicious bones. Henry Hank, more or less a witch. Ralph Bengstrom, an unraveled mummy becoming more unbandaged by the minute. A ghost named George Smith. J.J., no other name needed, a very fine ape man. Wally Bath, who said he was a gargoyle, but everyone said he looked more like Quasimodo. Red Fryer, what else but a beggar fresh out of a ditch. And last, and not least, Hackles Nibley, who had run up a costume at the last moment by simply clapping on a white scare mask and grabbing his grandpa's harvest-style scythe off the garage wall. All the boys being safely landed on English earth, their billion autumn leaves fell off and blew away. They stood in the midst of a vast field of wheat. Here, Master Nibley, I brought your scythe. Take it, grab! Now lie low, warned Mount Shroud, the druid god of the dead, Samhain, fall! They fell, for a huge scythe came skimming down out of the sky. With its great razor edge, it cut the wind. With its whistling side, it sliced clouds, it beheaded trees. It razored along the cheek of the hill, made a clean shave of wheat. In the air, a whole blizzard of wheat fell. And with every whisk, every cut, every scythe, the sky was a swarm with cries and shrieks and screams. The scythe hissed up. The boys cowered. Ugh, grunted a large voice. Mr. Moundshroud, is that you? cried Tom. For towering forty feet above them in the sky, an immense scythe in his hands, was this cowled figure, its face in midnight fogs. The blade swung down. Yes! Mr. Moundshroud, let us be! Shut up! Someone knocked Tom's elbow. Mr. Moundshroud lay on the earth beside him. That's not me. That's... Samhain! cried the voice in the fog. God of the dead! I harvest thus and so! Swoosh! All those who died this year are here, and for their sins this night are turned to beast! Swoom! Please, whispered Ralph the mummy. Shh! The scythe zippered Hackle's nibbly spine, gripping his costume in a long tear, knocking his own small scythe free of his hands. Beasts! And the harvest wheat flailed up, spun round on the wind, shrieking its, sh its souls. All those who had died in the past twelve months rained to earth, and a falling Touching the heads of wheat were turned to asses, chickens, snakes, which scurried, cackled, and brayed, were turned to dogs and cats and cows that barked, cried, and bawled, but all were miniature, all were tiny, small, no bigger than worms, no bigger than toes, no bigger than the sliced off tip of a nose. By the hundreds and thousands, the wheat heads snowed up in scatters and fell down as spiders, which could not shout or beg or weep for mercy, but which soundless raced over the grass, poured over the boys. A hundred centipedes tiptoed on Ralph's spine. Two hundred leeches clung to Hackle's nibbly scythe until, with a nightmare gasp, he raved and shook them off. Everywhere fell black widows and tiny boa constrictors. For your sins, your sins, take that and this, bellowed the voice in the whistling sky. The scythe flashed, the wind cut, fell in bright thunders. The wheat churned and gave up a million heads. Heads fell, sinners hit like rocks, and hitting were turned to frogs and toads and multitudes of scaly warts with legs and jellyfish with stank in the light. I'll be good, prayed Tom Skelton. Let me live, added Henry Hank. All of this said very loudly, for the scythe was making a dreadful roar. 
It was like an ocean wave falling down out of the sky, cleaning a beach and running a away up to cut more clouds. Even the clouds seemed to be whispering out swift and more fervent prayers for their own fates. Not me, not me. For all the evil you ever did, said Samhain. And the scythe cut, and the souls were harvested, and fell in blind newts, and awful bedbugs, and dreadful cockroaches to scuttle, limp, creep, and scrabble. My gosh, he's a bug maker! Flea squasher! Snake grinder outer! Roach transformer! Fly keeper! No! Samhain, October god! God of the dead! Sowen stomped a great foot, which tread a thousand bugs in the grass, crumpled ten thousand tiny soul beasts in the dust. I think, said Tom, time we... Ran, suggested Ralph, not offhand. Shall we take a vote? The scythe hissed. Sowen ruined. Vote, heck! Said Mound Shroud. All jumped up. You there, thundered the voice above them. Come back! No, sir, thanks, said one and then another, and put right foot after left. I figure, said Ralph, panting, leaping, tears on his cheeks. I've been pretty good most of my life. I don't deserve to die. Ah, <sighs> shouted Samhain. The scythe came in a guillotine, which chunked the head off an oak tree and fell to maple. The whole orchard of autumn apples fell into a marble pit somewhere. It sounded like a house full of boys falling downstairs. I don't think he heard you, Ralph, said Tom. They dived. They fell among rocks and shrubs. The scythe ricocheted off the stones. Samhain gave such a yell as brought an avalanche down a small hill in the nearby. Boy, said Ralph, squinched up, balled up. Feet against chest, eyes tight. England is no place to be a sinner. Even as a final rain, a shower, a downpour of hysterical souls turned beetle, turned flea, turned stink bug, turned daddy long legs, scurried over the boys. Hey, look, that dog! A wild dog, mad with terror, raced up the rocks. And its face, its eyes, something in the eyes. That couldn't be. Pipkin, said everyone. Pip, shouted Tom. Is this where we meet you? Is... But whoom! The scythe fell. And yipping with fright, the dog rolled over, slid down the grass. Hold on, Pipkin! We know you! We see you! Don't scare off! Don't! Tom whistled. But the dog, yarping with Pipkin's own dear, sweet, scared voice, was gone. But didn't an echo of his yip come back from the hills? Meet! Meet! Meet me. Where? thought Tom. Permanently. Where? <laughs>